Good afternoon, all. Uh, let me thankful to Dr. Roy and Dr. Sendil, myself Suresh from Kerala. I would like to present a paper on the title, Mathematical Practices in Residential Architecture According to Manishyala Bhasha. It's a textbook on residential architecture. I think, uh, let me read my papers. In, while reading, I will skip some unimportant portions in my paper. These are the major parts of my paper. This general view on the Kerala residential architecture, literary contribution of Kerala to architecture, appropriate plot for constructing a house, construction of a nalugattu, perimeter of a house, height of a house, height of the rafter from the foundation. Vastu Shastra is a Sanskrit term meaning architecture, which dealt with the science of construction of temples, forts, and houses. In India, the term Vastu appeared in the Vedas. Later, it was developed in different periods over different part of parts of the country. Most of the works deal with the architecture and sculpting, sculpting of idols and are composed in Sanskrit. Apart from the Sanskrit sources, there are many works composed in different regional languages of India. Malayalam, the vernacular of Kerala, also produced several works on architecture. These works covered both temple architecture and residential architecture. Malayalam works from Kerala are more or less influenced by Sanskrit culture, especially for the measurement system. Malayalam works followed the measurement unit used in Sanskrit. Nevertheless, Kerala followed its own housing concept from the beginning of the 10th century. Treatises on architecture have mentioned four types of carpenters, namely Sthabadi, Sutragrahi, Takshaga, and Vardhagi. Sthabadi is the person who, person one who plans, design, and coordinate the entire work. Sutragrahi is the who carries the rope. He is either the son or a close disciple of Sthabadi. He should have a sufficient knowledge of the scriptures to carry out the instruction of Sthabadi. Takshaga is the one who is knowledgeable about the material selection and works for the construction. Vardhagi is the artisan responsible for putting up construction. Over the years, the position of the Takshaga became prominent in the field of construction and nowadays he is doing all the works of the above mentioned others. A general view on the Kerala residential architecture. This is the picture of a uh, traditional Ke Kerala house. And the residential architecture in Kerala is developed along with the temple architecture. Therefore, many Sanskrit works on architecture give less importance to residential architecture. The climate of Kerala greatly influenced the traditional architecture. Kerala has a warm, humid climate during the summer and the rainfall is very heavy during the monsoon. Hence, the thick walls and the roof up to the veranda were constructed to avoid the high rainfall and heat. They have a veranda all around the building for protecting the external walls from the sunlight and rainwater. Stone, timber, clay, palm leaves, and coconut leaves are the major raw materials for the construction. The houses have an co internal courtyard for ventilation purposes. You can see here, this is the courtyard for the ventilation purpose. Sanskrit as well as Malayalam treatises do not discuss the construction of small lower class homes. Kerala architecture was influenced by astrology, hence it is more religious than other scientific subjects in India. The religious ceremonies like Bhumi Puja, worshipping the land, Shilanyasa, laying the cornerstone, Vastu Veli, worshipping the Vastu Purusha. Vastu Purusha is a deity or demon believed to protect houses and these are conducted before the construction of new house. In Kerala, a particular community called Vishwakarma is the authority of the architecture. They are also called the Asharis, derived from the Sanskrit word Ajarya, the teacher. The caste system in Kerala largely influenced the architecture, including the allocation of lands and other aspects of construction. This is a famous um, house in Kerala. Literary contribution of Kerala to architecture. Kerala scholars produced the treatises on archi architecture both in Sanskrit and Malayalam. At least nine works were composed in Sanskrit during 10th century to the 16th century from Kerala. Thereafter, many commentaries in both Malayalam and Sanskrit were written on those Sanskrit works. Apart from these Sanskrit works, there is a considerable amount of work written in Malayalam and Manipravalam. Manipravalam is a mixture of Malayalam and Sanskrit. Bhasha Shilpiratna, Vishwakarmiya Manipravalam and Manishyale Bhasha are the three major works in Malayalam and Manipravalam. The Bhasha Shilpiratna 
also known as aduk and taikuda bhasha is ascribed to a brahmin of taikatillam the work is based on the shilparatna of sri kumara and the period of the composition of the work is believed to 1825 the bhasha shilparatna is divided into two parts devale vidhi order of the construction of houses for gods and manushyale vidhi order of construction of houses for people the vishwakarmiya manipravala of varelath tachan is a manipravalan translation on the famous sanskrit work vishwakarmiya the period of the work is noted deciphered this work referred to different aspects of residential architecture the manushyale bhasha is an anonymous work and the period of the composition of the work is yet to be discovered the language seems to be not much earlier than 19th century malayalam this work is based on the manushyale chandrika the content in both works are same but the manushyale bhasha is an abridged version manushyale chandrika explained different aspects of the construction of houses whereas manushyale bhasha does not explain all the aspects of architecture in detail in some instances the value for the construction are different in these two works common to both books are factors involved in constructing houses like the examination and selection of site bhu variksha determination and orientation diknirnaya calculating numerical relation between parts of the structure that have auspicious or inauspicious meaning ayadiganam place of the vastu purusha vastu purusha mandala zoning graha vinyasa or sthana vinyasa position of the main entrance dwara sthana and the proportion of the building bhu 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 lambana vidhana bhu lambana vidhana beside these common factors basic basic mathematical practices involved in the construction of a residential building based on the manushyale bhasha are discussed in this paper appropriate plot for constructing a house selection of the land is very important in the construction of a land there are different method to find the appropriate site for the construction caste played a dominant role in the selection of building site during the medieval period the land is divided into four types namely brahmin kshatriya vaishya and shudra according with the four castes prevalent in india after the selection of the land the next step is to find the direction or orientation here is the picture for the shangustavana method shangustavana or fixing the ground moon is the method to identify this direction this is a geometrical method based on the solar path in this method a pole shangu of height half kasta which is equal to 30 36 cm is fixed vertically on a properly leveled ground with the foot of the pole as a center and radius equal to one hasta circle is drawn on the ground the point where the shadow of the tip of the pole touches the circle in the forenoon and afternoon are noted the line joining these two points give the approximate east west direction the sanskrit version provides a more precise procedure to obtain east west and from that the north south line after finding the four direction the next step is to identify the appropriate plot for the construction of the building malayalam verse is here i am only reading the english rendering hold a rope in the middle of the land carefully one toward the east that is east west direction and the other to the north north south direction and measure it hold four ropes in the four boundaries of the plot like this way when we may make another rope here we will get a square having four parts this is that picture this one we thus get a new land that has four parts among these four parts the northeast and southwest are the plots to construct the residence the other two are inauspicious for construction of residences today's practitioners do not seem to know the precise religion reason behind this association of the part of the land and gods elements or auspicious qualities but there probably is a tradition of teachers or experts that can explain this practical reason for some of these association may be related to wind direction and water flow this is the true for the other association of the space religion or cosmology details below this method is applicable only for small plots for small houses in the case of a large plot the following method is suitable if the plot is much bigger then divide each quarter into four parts after that mark the four lines namely yama sutra the line related to the god yama 
Jeeva Sutra, the line related to the life, Brahma Sutra, the line related to the God, Brahma, and Mrutya Sutra, the line related to the death. Construct the home close to the Druhina Sutra or the Brahma Sutra. According to the architectural theories, other three are inauspicious for constructing houses. If we construct for residential purposes, one must aware about the Vidhi and the Vastu Marma to avoid the sin. In this way, one can find an appropriate plot to construct a house. In VD system, the site is divided into nine VDs or concentric squares enveloping the Brahma Nabhi, the lands of the god Brahma, which is the point of the intersection of Brahma Sutra and Yama Sutra. The innermost VD is known as the Brahma VD, the way of Brahma, the lord of the creator of the universe. The other envelopes around the Brahma VD are named as Vinayaga VD, Akni VD, Jala VD, Sarpa VD, Yama VD, Deva VD, Pishaja VD in order. The width of the VD depends on the height of the owner of the house. The hasta is actually taken to the forum of the owner. The third, fifth and sixth and ninth should be avoided for the constructing the home. Vastu Purusha. Vastu Purusha is an imaginary god who is lying on the land with face land with face and stomach touching the ground. His head is at the northeast and legs are at southwest direction. Vastu Marma. There are five diagonal lines in the northeast and southeast direction of the Vastu Purusha Mandala, the place where Vastu Purusha is lying. Constructing a house on these intersection points of these diagonals are diagonals is strictly prohibited. The next picture you can see some intersection points. It's it's restricted in constructing homes in these di diagonals. Construction of a Nalugat. Nalugat is a typical traditional homestead of old Kerala, namely Taravada, where most of the joint families lived together under one roof. The traditional architecture is typically a rectangular structure where four halls are joined together with a central courtyard open to the sky. As perimeter of a house. The method to find out the perimeter for the house is as follows. Multiply the desired length of the roof starting from 5 by the number 8 and add it to the number corresponding to the yoni, yoni sanghi of the side. It may be east, west, north or south. Then divide the result by 3. The result obtained is the perimeter of that house. There are 8 yonis represented by 8 directions starting from the east in a clockwise direction. The yonis from 1 to to 8 are named after animals and represent the direction that the house is facing. The Yoni Sangya for the east is 1, for south, is, south it is 3, for west it is 5, and for north it is 7. Only the odd Yonis are auspicious and different values represent different specific qualities. The Sanskrit version explains the specific meaning of the different Yoni numbers, but the Malayalam version does not explain this. If the desired length is Ishtanila, is L, the length is measured in coal. Coal is the me measurement, uh, which, which measurement unit which measures the length. And the yoni number, yoni sangya is Y. Then the perimeter of the house is 8L plus Y by 3. The text also presents an alternative method which is choosing the ratio of the length and the breadth from a list of prescribed proportion. Then the yoni and the perimeter can be derived from. Height of a house. When dividing the desired bread B of the house by 28 and then adding it to 12, 14 and 24 with any of these numbers, the result is the height of the house. Similarly to the Yoni calculation, this verse prescribes specific relation between the height and bread which guarantee good qualities for the house. In general, many construction proportions have meaning that can be auspicious or inauspicious and are prescribed in such a way as to guarantee good qualities. Height of the rafter from the foundation. As I described earlier, Kerala is getting more rains than other part of, part of the country. During the rain and wind, rainwater from the roof directly falls on the exterior walls of the house. To avoid this, the rim of the roof is built close to the ground. To prevent the rainwater from 
entering into the home. Therefore, the height of the rafter from the foundation is very important in constructing the house. The method to find out of out height of the rafter from the basement is as follows. The height of the rafter from the basement should be taken as 205, 307, 4 of 8 or half of any of this fraction of the height of the rafter on the top. If the height of the wall is too cold, then the, then the height of the rafter from the foundation is one cold. If, either, if the height is taken as the 4 by 8 or the half of the wall, this way. Here, here we have the rafter. We will take this, this half of the this, this, take this. So this way we will get the height of this, uh, this raf the rafter from here. Okay, with this I am concluding my paper. Okay, I, I uh, forgot to uh, present uh, Suraj before he uh, started to speak. So uh, he's uh, just finished his uh, PhD from uh, 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 Sanfit University in Kaladi. <laughs> Sanfit College or Sanfit University? University. Sanfit University in Kaladi. Uh, he's, been Oops. He, he's been visiting here for uh, uh, three months working on an astronomical uh, treaties but in Malayalam, Bhadradipam, together with uh, Shohi Rossi, and he was kind enough to also present us this uh, talk about uh, 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 architecture in uh, Malayali texts. So, questions, please. Thank you. Absolutely fascinating. I have loads of questions, but I'm only, only going to ask you two. Um, one is about um, if you like the relationship between the theory and practice. My question stems from um, another treatise on architecture that I'm more familiar with by a Roman architect Vitruvius. So Vitruvius says, you know, the whole nice mathematical, the proportion should be like that for the various types of temples. And then he has a, a, a paragraph, which I paraphrase, where he says, those are the numbers, but when you actually build, mm -hmm. uh, you have to see what the environment looks like. So there's going to be an approximation. You're going to kind of add somewhere, take away somewhere else. And it seems to me that your architects, I mean, the, the team <laughs> there, must have been faced with a similar situation, if only because uh, the whole complicated plotting on the building site seems to assume that the piece of land is a square, but obviously it wasn't always a square, right? So what do they do? I mean, is there an acknowledgement somewhere that you have to kind of bend the rules, approximate a bit when you build, mm -hmm. given that even the flattest piece of land will have, for instance, differences, not everything will be square, and that's one question. Okay. And the second question is about this difference between upper class and lower class, because uh, uh, evidently lower class houses must also have been built. Um, do we have any evidence that they just tried to imitate the upper classes? Are they completely different? Like how upper class was an upper class home? I mean, how many actual examples are there of buildings built to these prescriptions in general? For the second question, I think Kerala have, you know, mostly in India have this caste system is very prevalent still. And the, in this construction of the house is for this upper caste classes, they have this Naligattu and other classes, houses. And for the lower class, they are only making small kind of sheds in ancient times, means in the medieval period. But nowadays it's changed and all are making the same houses. Mm -hmm. It's changed. The, yeah, all are following the same art method and constructing a house. This is on from the, uh, this construction is only on this uh, upper, this type of construction is only based on this upper class family or the, or the Brahmin houses or, or for these um, um, palaces and the forts and this upper class Brahmin community houses. It seems to me. Mm -hmm. And for the, Do you always stick to 
the exact proportion. Uh -huh. So did they change the proportions according to the form of the land? Yes, yes, the, they, are, they are changing this, uh, um, this uh, in, um, when we are considering in a small house, the method is different, and for the bigger plots, it's the method is different. Mm. For so the, the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you for your talk. I have two questions, and I think I will uh, ask them one by one. Uh, first of all, <coughs> after finding the four directions, you mentioned that you hold the ropes, and I found it interesting because it's uh, not set the ropes or draw the ropes. Uh, uh, so, uh, <laughs> since I still don't uh, know enough Malayalam to, to read it, uh, uh, it was interested uh, whether uh, the, the word is indeed to so the, that the word indeed is to hold, and if it, if so, if it uh, um, has a reference to multiple people uh, putting the rope, and I was interested to to, to know whether it in indicates an action going on. Yeah, what was this? And they are holding the rope. Do people holding the rope from north to no, north and southwest, and the other from the east to west, and they are marking this. Nowadays, it's also this one is following holding the rope and draw, drawing this line and they are constructing uh, they are digging the this plot and have constructing the house and they ask which word uh, corresponds to hold yeah okay um charan uh -huh. okay pidikiga pidikiga pidikya sutra pidikya sutram charjit yeah charjit is means carefully pidikya is to hold the, the second question is, uh, so we have been dealing with space. Uh, the, the instructions tell us uh, where to build uh, the, the measurements. Now the, the question is, is there any indication of uh, time? Uh, does the text tell uh, any, the timing of the construction, when to do the measurements, etc.? No. 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 Not okay. mentioning the time. Uh, um, I was interested, of course, in the computation of the perimeter of the house, but there's something I didn't understand, but it's, uh, it's um, because there's the desired length, and then uh, there is an auspicious number. Huh? The yoni is some sort of scheme like this. So, uh, but since you, the perimeter that you compute does, it factors in the desired length, but then it's not the exact perimeter of the, uh, that you wish. Mm -hmm. that is computed. So I was wondering what this meant. Mm -hmm. Do you understand my question? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I think for the small house, the length is different. And for the bigger house, the length is most different. So they are using this, this desired length for, the, for finding the perimeter. And no, but how, so how do they, okay, there's the perimeter that you want to have, mm -hmm. and there is the one that needs to be done for it to be auspicious. How do you choose in between both, or how is it negotiated? Or is there any negotiations? Or you only do the auspicious perimeter and not the one that you want? Do you, you, do you get the question? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, I think this, this text is not much de giving details about this auspicious and what is the, uh, which numbers are auspicious or which, is, which are not auspicious, but the Sanskrit version have mentioned this, which uh, the result, which one is auspicious or which are not auspicious. Final result, if it's auspicious or not auspicious mentioned in Sans Sanskrit okay, version. I'll say it in another, totally another way. Uh, it's interesting because it's a, it's a mode of computing the perimeter mm -hmm. that is not that of the standard um, uh, text that we have. So it's, it would be really interesting to understand how it's used in practice, if it is, and how it's negotiated with the other way, you know? It can be, I'm curious to understand, to see how it, mm -hmm. how it works.
Okay, it doesn't, yes, it seems. Uh, so my question is uh, inspired by um, the writings that were composed in Chinese about architecture. Mm -hmm. So um, the first writing we have in Chinese was composed in the 11th century, mm -hmm. but it was not for people building, mm -hmm. but for people who were uh, giving orders mm -hmm. to those who were gathering material mm -hmm. and building. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, again, the same question, for whom uh, the writings you mentioned were actually written? And a related question was, you mentioned several treatises, very old treatises, and then if I understood correctly, you focused on much later mm -hmm. writings. Mm -hmm. And so I was wondering whether there are any connections in theory, in orientation, in type of writing, or whether these are completely different kinds of writing. Mm -hmm. I think um, this text um, written for the communi Ashari community. They are they are they are the constructors. They are they are constructing homes. And for the second, um, the most of the text composed in architecture is in Sanskrit. That is why I am not taken that Sanskrit work. Uh, Malayana works were composed very little later, about um, after six, 17th century. So so that I, I choose this uh, these works for this paper. When you mention um, the <coughs> Malay Yalam commentaries, uh, they are also very late. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Just to add to it, uh, at the beginning, you said that originally there were like four different professions involved mm -hmm. in building the home, <laughs> and later it became just one profession. Mm -hmm. So it might be that the movement from the Sanskrit to the Malayalam has to do with the collapse of these four different professionals into one community, and then they have sort of revised version or simplified version of the manual uh, that they follow. But you see, the, the manual, wh what you call manual, uh, uh, you can have a manual for people who are going to give order to workers, but you can have also manual for workers. You, um, mm -hmm. Uh, at later times, what happened is that the, these different persons became the same person. So instead of four different categories of professionals, one giving orders, one holding the rope, one selecting materials, one actually building, it, it collapses into one profession and then you lose this distinction, I think. I mean, even after the distinctions collapse, generally speaking, at the building site, the building site is a hierarchical place. You still need someone who tells the others what to do. So the distinctions collapse up to a certain point. And I wonder also about the training, because the second group, the Sutra Krai, Sutra seems to be there mostly because it's like the junior people who are getting trained. Or is it, is it just my impression? So what changes to the training when the group, the categories collapse into one group? Who knows, right? Not that good. We don't know, okay. <laughs> That's good to know. Another question? Um, just a small question about the land and the way it's divided up. So you mentioned that there's a plot and it's divided into four parts yeah. and then uh, that there's a plot of land and it's divided into four parts uh -huh. and only two are favorable for building. Mm -hmm. So are the others, other parts always left empty or is there something particular that's supposed to go there? Those are astrological concepts. Um, and these two, that's, also, oh, that, that's why I said that there are some kind of auspicious and inauspicious things. That's why only they're saying uh, these two points are auspicious and we don't construct this house in these to, um, these are you no know, species. Okay. Yeah. But there are not know the reason behind that why they are you know, choosing these two points. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another question? Oh. 
I thought Melissa was asking, what do you do with the inauspicious parts? <laughs> Nothing. Not even like cultivate rubbish. We don't, okay, that's yes. no. Yeah, yeah. cultivating some things, um, planting trees. Ah, okay, so you can do gardening. Something. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. It's always easier. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about uh, hierarchies, one text that comes closer to this is the treatise on uh, sculpture, mm. where uh, when you're making sculptures, so there is a very clear distinction uh, starting from about the ninth century onwards in Sanskrit and later on in all the other languages, the Shilpa Shastra, the Maya Matha and other texts. So very clearly defined roles for who comes in at what point of the execution of the uh, sculpture. Of course, the supreme person there is the Vishwakarma himself, who is uh, the person who actually does the wax molding of the thing and uh, Anyone who follows after the Vishwakarma is just the person who shines, mm -hmm. you know, who polishes, who gives the, the manual and the, and the, you know, the conception of the divine form. Uh, you know, there's a very clear, uh, it gets more interesting in sculpture, but not so much in the, in the residential architecture thing, in the temple construction. I mean, again, going back to China, um, there is a tool which is a kind of uh, ruler yeah. with subdivisions, with um, auspic auspicious and inauspicious subdivisions. And this tool is used for anything you build. Yeah. Uh, this kind of uh, facility, yeah. trains, sculptures, houses, and so on. And this gives you the inauspicious and auspicious dimensions that you can use when you are building anything. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering whether there is anything material mm -hmm. that would be used in this kind of activity. Any um, tool, any object, any... Implements. Implements. In China, in Taiwan, until today, mm. the school is used, the rule. So perhaps it should be interesting to do some kind of principle The case of the sculptors, we still have, uh, we did some ethnographic work among sculptors. There it's clearly you take a fresh uh, leaf of the coconut tree and then you divide them into folds, into several multiple folds. And, uh, and every day morning the, the sculptor comes to work with a fresh uh, coconut leaf and that becomes the scale for the day. Mm. So we have uh, that in the terms of, uh, in coastal areas where they build sheds like this houses where they also need uh, you know the slanting roof houses which uses pa dry palm leaf based uh, roofing and then uh, erecting the roof with the thing mm -hmm. so there uh, they also use a certain measure from the palm leaf mm -hmm. and the thing so it's usually the fresh leaf that becomes in i have uh, not seen a ruler which is like last forever, at least in the sculptor and the uh, how I mean house builder in the coastal areas that I have seen. Whereas in, uh, uh, of course, in Dravidian architecture, it's a standard uh, debate. I think maybe Professor would tell us more. So everyone goes into the huge temple complex looking for uh, the compass or the scale somewhere inscribed within the complex of the temple, but. Uh, Everyone comes up with one little mark as, oh, this is the scale that determines the entire temple complex. But uh, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, because this morning, uh, you mentioned
mentioned the stay on the temple and you mentioned subdivision, but you did not say anything about the subdivision, how it was subdivided and, um, and that was something I, I wanted to ask. Usually it is uh, divided into two, sometimes into four, four divisions. Thank you.